Hey everyone, this is Jessica from Well Hello Cookie. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Mrs. Claus class. You should have everything you need in your class kit. Icing bags, sprinkles, a wooden stylus, and your class worksheet. Six plain cookies to decorate. I do need you to go ahead and grab a pair of scissors and a napkin. So to get started, a few things we'll need is a pair of scissors. Also, I would like for you to grab your napkin and have that close. Get your class worksheet out and grab your pink icing. We are going to massage this bag. You may notice that the ingredients have separated and that is perfectly normal. So let's go ahead and take about two minutes to massage that bag. You're gonna have to do this with each bag. So if you wanna pause the video here, that way you get a chance to massage all of those colors in. The next thing we're gonna do is start cutting open some of our bags. You're gonna grab your red icing bag and you're gonna look for the seam. I always like to cut with the seam up. I flatten the bag and flatten the tip. That way whenever I do cut it, it will make a round circle. Always start by cutting off a small tip. You can always go larger. So just start off small and we'll practice with that. Then we're gonna get our card and the first thing we're gonna do is apply pressure to the bag. I'm gonna do it off of the line first just because I wanna see how much icing is coming and what the flow is. So I take it and I press a little bit out and see what the flow is and then I'm gonna start on my first line. You always wanna push out a little bit of icing, that way it won't make bubbles at the beginning and end. Although bubbles are really not that big of a deal, but just if you want that crisp line, push a little icing out, let it fall down on the page, lift your icing up and then lay it back down. And we're gonna repeat that as we complete these next couple of lines. Once I'm done with my line, I take my icing off camera and I kind of wipe the tip with the tissue. That just means I have a little clog, so I'm trying to get that cleared up. When I do the loops, I do the same thing. I push out a little bit of icing and then I lift my bag up and I let that icing fall on the page. That way I have a little bit more control and I can see where my icing is falling. As we move on to the next section, we are going to do the exact same technique. We're gonna push a little bit of icing out of the bag, lay it down, apply that pressure to the bag, lift it up so you can see where the icing is falling, and then move your wrist and your arm up and down so it can guide you on where to put that icing down on the line. Next step is the circle. Same principle. I always like to go clockwise with my circles. The reason I go clockwise is because I don't end up in that weird angle where I can't see my icing because my arm is in front of me. So I put a little bit of pressure on my icing bag and get that little bit of icing out, lay it down on the circle, lift my hand, let the icing fall, and just kind of guide it around the circle. And again, this way, my actual arm does not cross over so I can see where the icing is falling the entire time. Moving on to the heart, it is the exact same technique, except this time we're going down to a point, press that icing out, lift it up, go around the edge, bring it down, and stop pressing your icing, lay the rest down to make that sharp, crisp corner. So now moving on to our next section are gonna be these dots. The way that I do them is I put my icing in the middle of it, 
start applying pressure and just squeeze the pressure let the dot build up i take the tip and kind of swirl it on the top to kind of get that point down that way i don't have a peak on my dot so apply that pressure wiggle the icing back in there to get that tip down and then i make a nice round ball with your hearts it's the same thing except when you put that pressure in the top corner you're going to drag your icing back down to a point so circle in the corner drag the rest of the icing down to a point these are great for little button noses they're great if you want to put buttons on like a gingerbread man or make the charcoal on a snowman little heart shapes you just build it up pull it down this is also the way that i do snowflakes i draw a line and do this heart technique on either side of that line all right so next we're going to move on to the writing i will be completely honest with you I do not write names or anything without a projector. If you ever see me writing something and it looks a little sloppy, it is because I did not use a projector. So the way that we use icing with that is I typically use a type um, PME tip 1.5. I do not like to use these um, tipless bags. Also, I always take out the Cairo syrup that I put in icing so it's a firmer icing and it's toothpaste consistency. When doing letters, I put more pressure on my downstroke than I do my upstroke. I kind of let the icing flow out of the bag on the upstrokes. Um, with block letters, sometimes I work backwards on them. I don't know why. I just feel like I have a little bit more control than if I am doing cursive letters. I work the way that we would typically write because on those downstrokes you're going to squeeze the bag because you want to create a thicker layer on that downstroke to give it that calligraphy look. So I'm writing freehand here by copying these bags and this is not necessarily the icing I would use so it's not going to be the sharpest but you can get the point and get some practice doing it since we are going to freehand writing cookies on our Miss Claus um, cookie jar. Now that we've wrapped up our practice sheet, I'm gonna grab all of my tipless bags and I'm going to cut them the same way that I cut that red bag. Also, you'll see like sometimes the tip flies out. Make sure you grab that and knock that onto the ground or put that in the trash. You never want the plastic to end up in your cookie. So once we have all the bags nice and cut, um, just make sure you have that flattened edge when you're cutting it and you do a small hole you can always go larger we're gonna grab our heart shaped cookie as the first cookie that we're gonna decorate with just because we need to put a full flood on this and we're gonna be doing a layer on top and we want it to have enough time to dry um, I always say the best way to get these cookies to dry quickly is putting a fan in front of it typically royal icing cookies take 8 to 12 hours to dry Obviously this class is only 27 minutes, but in person we would at least have two hours. So when you flood this cookie, you may need to continue on to the next steps, but before we work on this cookie again, you might want to um, put it in front of a fan to dry. So let's go ahead and outline this cookie, and then we're gonna finish all the outlines and come back to flooding this one. The next thing we're gonna do is grab our Miss Claus um, hot cocoa cup. I'm going to grab my white icing bag and I'm going to put a little bit on where I think the hole for the handle would be. If these were cookies I was going to do for sale, I would actually do a layer of flood. Um, you can use your scribe to kind of push it down to cover that whole area. You could also use a edible um, paintbrush to help you brush that down. Again, if I was doing this for a client, I would just go ahead and flood the whole cookie white and then I would add another layer on top. So let's go ahead and outline this. First, we're gonna outline just the rectangle section of the hot cocoa cup, and then we will come back and put two lines for the actual handle of the cocoa cup.
Next, we're gonna go ahead and grab that cookie jar. We're gonna grab our light pink icing. We're first gonna do the lid. So we're gonna draw or outline a rectangle for the top of that lid. Then we will come back and we will start working on the handle of that lid as well. Once we have wrapped up doing the second line for the handle, we are going to outline the entire jar. Once we are done with outlining this jar, then we are gonna grab the Miss Claus cookie back um, and start working on the top of that cookie. Um, sometimes whenever you see me pull away, it's because either I have a clog in my icing bag or I have to clean my tip off. So I use a napkin typically for that. Um, press down on the seam to still keep it round, uh, but it gets my icing bag unclogged. So now we're moving on to the Miss Claus Hot Cocoa Cup. We are going to do the whipped cream, and as you can see here, there's a lot of indents on my sample cookie because I want it to, to look like it was a swirled whipped cream. So I'm gonna grab my white icing bag, and I'm going to look at my cookie, and I know the first layer of whipped cream goes all the way across. So I'm gonna start there by going up to the first crease, kind of dipping down like a whipped cream sweep would look laid on top of each other and connect there. Then I'm gonna do my straw. So I'm gonna go down from the corner um, and make my straw that way. Now we have kind of our base with our straw to work off of. So I'm gonna take my second layer of whip, connect it to my icing, and on my third layer, I'm going to make my loop. So I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna dip down, and make like a loop like on the top of a sundae or something. And that is how I make my icing look like it's whipped. Then I'll connect that last little piece on the other side. Then I am going to add the lines to my straw so I can do a candy cane um, straw. Um, I think I'm gonna add two lines here, or I'm gonna add three lines here because I want to be able to do two sections of red. Next, we're gonna grab our heart cookie and we're gonna start the flooding process. So when we flood a cookie, we are gonna apply more pressure to the bag because we want the cookie to be flooded with the icing. So you don't have to press lightly. I don't go all the way to the edge depending on the liquidity of the icing. Liquidity means how runny is the icing for the kids out there. So. I'm gonna try to fill this in and then I can use my wooden scribe to work the icing to the edge. But sometimes I will go back and use my icing bag and kind of fill it in as well, just to get a little bit more icing to spread across that top layer. So this is how you would completely flood a cookie. Now you can see I'm using that wooden scribe and I'm really working it in a circular motion to get it all the way to the edge just to make sure my cookie's filled in. I kind of do this also to work my icing flat. So sometimes it seems like you're not progressing, but when you keep going in that circular motion, it will flatten out the icing. And then when I'm done with this, I will pick it up and I'll give it a little shake just to make sure that everything is smooth.
So now here's that shaking motion that I'm doing. I'll grab my scribe, maybe pop some bubbles if I see any of them. Make sure I've covered the whole cookie so I can get a nice flat surface. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our cookie jar. Usually to save time, I try to do the middle pieces of flood and then that way I can come back and do the other two sides. But because this cookie jar is so big, I'm gonna go ahead and flood the largest section first because the last two sections are so small that they won't take that long to dry. And I really need to get majority of this large cookie flooded. So same principle as we did with the heart, fill it in. You don't have to go to the edge right away. You can wait till you've gotten the middle filled in. Use your scribe, really work that icing to the edge and then give it a little shake just to flatten it out. Now I know my cookies can be softer, so you don't want to squeeze the edge of my specific cookie. Traditionally, a sugar cookie is a hard, thinner, crisper um, cookie, but with modern day cooking, we've all kind of gone to this softer, soft to bite cookie. Um, we don't want it to be snapping in half as much anymore. Um, so picking it up can sometimes be tricky if it's too soft. Now that our cookie is flooded, just give it a shake. Um, we're gonna try to get it as smooth as possible. Get your scribe, pop any air bubbles that you may see right there under the surface. Make sure your icing is to the edge so you can have a nice smooth surface. Be right back down we are going to do the handle while we still have it so get your icing bag again and let's fill in that handle then we have two of our sections done and we will be able to wrap up um, this cookie a lot quicker Next, we're gonna grab the Miss Claus cup. We're gonna start with red icing. We are gonna fill in just a little section um, on the straw at the top. And then I completely forgot to fill in that third section too because I thought it touched the whipped cream. So if you wanted to go ahead, you can fill it in now or you can just wait till I do it on this video. So fill in that top little portion with red. Then we're gonna grab our white icing and we're gonna fill in the bottom layer of whipped cream on the cookie. Then we're gonna grab our blue icing and we are gonna flood the large section of the cookie. Same principle that we have been doing. You're going to outline it, fill it all the way in, get your scribe, work it in a circular motion um, all the way to the edge, shake the cookie a little bit to get it nice and flat and smooth. So do all the things and techniques that we learned with that heart cookie.
Once we've got our cookie flooded, we are gonna put the stars on there. I don't know if you've noticed, so I'm showing you here the stars that are on the sample cookie. So the way that you do that is that you put a dot for on the cookie, like the wet on wet technique, and I'm gonna use my wooden stylus and I'm gonna drag the little white dot into four different directions to make a star. So I'm gonna do three dots on each corner. Now that our heart cookie is dry, I am going to grab my sprinkles and then my pink icing. And I am going to make a heart shape with wavy lines. And again, this is gonna be messy because this is supposed to look like a sugar cookie that is a sugar cookie, if that makes sense. So make a wavy line, fill it in all messy, and then put the sprinkles all over it. After we're done with our heart cookie, we're gonna grab the cookie jar and flood in our last little section. Now we're going to grab our red icing to write cookies on the jar. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I do not like writing on cookies if I don't have a projector. I always use a projector if I want it to look nice and neat. I always use a PME 1.5 tip to also write. Um, but for here, we are just going to freehand it and challenge ourselves. So on the down strokes, I always press a little bit harder on the bag. I'm trying to give it that cursive calligraphy look. On my upstrokes, I lightly press on my bag and keep the line thinner um, and then drag the icing basically to the location. Then when I go down again, I am squeezing down on the bag and then going up, lightly press. Last thing I'm going to do is pressure pipe a heart on my cookie jar. So I'm going to press hard and make a dot, drag it down. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. And now I have a cute little heart on the bottom of my cookie jar. The next thing we're going to do is grab the hot cocoa cup and we are going to fill in the rest of the areas that are not filled in. I'm going to start with the white and I'm going to fill in 
the whipped cream portion of the cookie first, starting with the top and the tip, working my way down. Once we finish that top portion, we're gonna move on to the bottom portion of the whipped cream. This is where I was talking about I kind of messed up on the straw. I really should have done it where I filled in both red sections and then did the opposite two white sections and then I could have come back now and done the white sections and these two opposite whip sections. Oops, my bad. Sometimes it just works out that way. So now we're gonna go and fill in the handle after this. So grab your blue icing and let's fill in that handle all the way. Now we're gonna finish up this cookie. We are going to grab our white icing, fill in the other two sections of the straw, and then we will grab our red icing and we will fill in that last section of the straw. You really should give it a little bit of dry time in between filling the sections. I would say about 10 minutes. Let it crust over before it touches the next section just so that you don't have a lot of bleeding issues. Last but not least, we'll grab that red icing. I'm gonna clean my tip off. Um, real quick off screen, just because it's gotten a little crusted too from sitting there. And we are gonna write Miss C on this cup. So the same type of piping that we practice where the downstrokes, you put pressure on the bag. The upstrokes, you just kind of put a little pressure and have that line um, to give it that calligraphy look. So I'm gonna do that with my M here, connect it to the R and the S. I'm gonna do a heart for my little um, period for Mrs. C. So the heart will be the same type of thing. It'll be the pressure pipe technique that we use um, and draw that bag down. And then I'll put a nice little C here to round out this cup. And then I'm gonna fill in that small little portion left of red that I have on my straw. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Miss Claus Cookie Class from Wahoo Cookie. Give us a like if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. Have a sweet day. We'll see you soon.